This is a HP ProLiant ML150 G2 server dating from about 2005. It's a giant beast powered by a single 3 GHz Xeon processor, I think based on the Northwood core. And of course it's dog slow and pretty much useless by today's standards. Above that it's been running for a very long time since I think it was only retired this year. So any sane person would ask why the hell am I bringing this thing home? And well, the answer is quite simple. What we've got in here it seems to be a bog standard SATA hot swap bay built into the case and indeed the drives it's loaded with are absolutely bog standard ultra cheapy Mac store home hard drives from the local computer store basically. So this thing, this or rather this case is going to make an excellent upgrade for my own home server. Since as some of you might know I'm running uh, SATA drives in my server and uh, it's sitting in a very very old case which uh, you need to basically disassemble complete in order to swap the drives. So what we're going to be doing in this video is uh, try and find out if we can put, uh, fit a normal Micro ATX motherboard in this thing uh, which I really think is going to work because uh, this just seems to be an entirely standard ATX form factor or EATX form factor PC with a normal ATX hard drive, Molex connectors for everything and normal SATA cables connecting the hard drive base to the PCI X RAID controller. So I think we've got a decent chance at fitting my normal server PC in this case. Now beyond just the 6 drive SATA hot swap bay, this case does have a, quite a slew of rather attractive features including a 120mm rear fan, I mean that we can fit any standard quiet PC fan in there as we want and uh, a absolutely standard form factor ATX power supply, uh, which means that we can just fit a more modern, way more effective power supply in there if we desire. It's also a very uh, deep and spacious case, which means that we're going to have excellent cooling abilities even if we fit it with few fans. Uh, a downside being that we've only got 80mm fans in the front there, no real fan cooling the hard drives. But uh, I think if we just fit a normal exhaust fan there at a low speed, and we're going to have enough negative pressure inside the case to not need any front fans and, and get a small amount of airflow over our, over our hard drives. So since we're running, I'm running 5900 RPM modern drives, uh, heating of drives really isn't an issue. We also do have a floppy drive there which uh, I may recycle to mount my SSD in since we obviously don't have a 2.5 inch mount in this case but uh, SSD can go pretty much anywhere. It's not properly mounted in my current server case either. But uh, this uh, fun part of this thing is it actually does power on so brace yourselves. I did make the effort to give it a very thorough blowjob prior to actually powering it on in this uh, workshop because this thing has run so many hours, the amount of dust caked in every little crevice was uh, nothing short of insane. Uh, so what this has been used for, it, it's got 480GB drive so I think it's been used to, uh, as a production server for a small local company and it's got 1GB of RAM, a 3GHz processor and it's running a Windows 2003 and that noise you just heard there is the lovely 72GB tape drive trying to find uh, its tape but I don't think it's functional, it's just flashing its clean LED. Ah, isn't that lovely? So many mechanical mods in these uh, old servers which you just don't get in a modern machine. But uh, while the RAID controller is complaining about one dead drive, as you will see in a moment, it actually does boot uh, into uh, Windows Server 2003. Now we're obviously not going to be digging around this since I don't know who really who owned this thing and uh, what, they, what sensitive data they might have stored on it. I'm going to just trash these drives since they're 80 gigabyte hard drives which probably can with a machine, let's just rip one out and see if it survives. And uh, this is an 80 gigabyte SATA 150 hard drive, Maxtor Diamond Max 10, so it's going to be, yeah, 
November 10th, 2005. And it seems we ripped out one of the last working drives, trashing the array entirely. Oh well, nothing of value was lost. Now something I am a bit concerned about is that we actually do have a whole slew of active circuitry on the backplane of a SATIC hot swap bay and uh, I'm hoping that none of this is going to be specific for the uh, RAID controller we've got in this uh, machine uh, out of it's just going to be some like sequential startup thing or something which won't uh, cause any issues when we're trying to wire this up to what's essentially a normal uh, modern PC motherboard. So well, the first thing we're going to be doing now is just get ripping out everything in this machine and uh, uh, trying to see if hooking these SATA wires up to a normal PC motherboard is uh, going to work at all. Alright, let's get this thing out of there. This must have been rather state of the art at the time. Definitely not the cheapest option. Alright, the moment of truth is upon us. We've wired everything up to an absolutely bog standard Office PC from 2008. So let's flick the switch and see what happens. Hmm, something. something went weird. Alright, let's see if we can capture that behaviour on, on camera, because that was just bizarre. I did it once, but uh, not again. Uh, perhaps you saw the LEDs blinking there, it was an absolute psychedelic disco going on. Although the PC is powered on and drawing power, but we're not getting an image and the drives are not spinning up. Hmm. Weird. Well, I have no idea what happened there, but uh, the page it plotted something weird and that killed the motherboard. Uh, so now I've brought it to motherboard and tested that it works first. Uh, and uh, we'll just try again. Uh, these are old boards. If they die, they die. I don't quite care. They're disposable. Time for take number two. Rest in peace, old server motherboard. That sounds more promising. And we haven't killed this motherboard. And it detected all the drives, I think. Let's see that again. And yes, indeed. Those are our uh, old and broken drives detecting just fine. So now the question is why did this SATA controller kill the other motherboard? I guess we'll never know. But uh, that's good enough for me. So let's get this porting started. And in case you're wondering, yes, that is an Intel improved CPU cooler. There we go, that's the machine ripped all asunder, from the tape drive to the glorious Delta power supply and the fantastic, well, the humongous E80X motherboard. It's, it's really hard to find a piece of this machine which I don't like. Even the heatsink's just a fantastic piece of engineering. I wish you could feel this. This thing weighs 200, 300 grams. It's just a massive piece of copper with two heat pipes and just copper everywhere. A real screamer of a ball bearing fan on there as well. Now, uh, <coughs> these heat sinks, uh, we're going to have to get a bit medieval on this case because these heat sinks actually bolt straight onto the case itself. They're way too heavy to bolt to the motherboard. And uh, that's not too big of an issue because uh, that's just stand ups in the a backplane for that. However, HP have been a bit cheapy about the construction of the case because they've chosen to actually rivet the right side on. So we're going to have to drill those rivets out and do some bodily modifications to this thing. Uh, I simply cannot get enough of looking at this motherboard. It, it's, it's just a piece of art. There we go, now we can actually clean this motherboard mounting plate up. There we go, that's nicely cleaned up. The Gotham is clean as so they come anyway, these rivet style standoffs aren't too much fun to deal with. Uh, but we should now be able to mount a normal uh, micro ATX motherboard just fine in this case. Uh, however, before we do that, since we've already got the side panel off, uh, we're going to do what makes this server mine and nobody else's. And that's 
installing some soundproofing because that's one of my major complaints with my current case. Uh, it has a lot of resonancy sounds from the hard drives, even though I've the stuff that full of socks and this stuff already, uh, th there's not a lot of getting around that in that case, it's just, uh, uh, well, such a large construction. Uh, however, this one has the driver bay sitting a bit uh, better suited for soundproofing, so we're just going to cover this entire cage, basically, uh, with the soundproofing material, and we're going to put some on here, and some on there, and a lot of the sides as well. In fact, but I'll need to trim these down. Oh, there we go, an uh, arduous amount of cutting and measuring and gluing later, we've got pretty much the entire case covered. Uh, the top of it is uh, uh, pretty much entirely covered, we've got perhaps 90% coverage. Got some in these rails, the hard drive cage is uh, entirely covered on all sides except for the rear and because of, uh, there's no clearance between the PCB and uh, the cage so it's impossible. There's some under there, there's some on top. And there's plenty on this upper drive cage as well. Uh, not because there's going to be any mechanical drives in it, uh, but just because it's so close to the hard drive cage. And we've got uh, some of the bottom, uh, not a lot, just a couple of pieces. The bottom's not hugely uh, important since it's so well coupled to the hard ground anyway through the feet of the chassis. And we've got some on the back as well. Uh, this is important because we've got this fan mounted here, which would otherwise uh, transmit to vibrations to, to the rest of the case. And of course, and most importantly, we've got these side panels covered. That's not going to pass a lot of sound at all. A uh, very nice thing about this material is uh, you really don't need uh, full coverage to have a good effect. The more you have, the better it is. But even on this panel, which I, I couldn't put to full coverage on because there's some protruding things on the actual case side, it still sounds just fine. And on the other side of the cage, I've just uh, filled this up with pretty much leftover scraps, so our motherboard plate is not hugely important because uh, it's uh, going to be inside of everything and pretty well uh, dampened by the rest of the case, but it sounds pretty okay. And uh, around the front, we also have what looks like it fit around the hard drive case just in order to dampen it as much as possible because it, it is important that you not only dampen the material itself but also the surface it attaches to. So the front panel would, uh, well if you've got even a little bit of noise coming from this, uh, this it could resonate with the metal in the front panel and uh, cause needless noise. And now with the soundproofing out of the way, I want to give uh, some attention to the, uh, say, the backplane, because HP have been a tad naughty, even though this is an enterprise product. Because, well, some of you might be thinking, oh, look at that top, that's a Panasonic cap. Nope, they've gone the cheap route, these are Hermes caps, which were horrible caps, and they were notorious for copying others, uh, but just the top design of a cap, they've done Rubicon, they've done Chemicon, and most infamously they've done uh, Panasonic. So perhaps that's related to why the board was acting weird when I first tried it with the rather weak power supply in my test setup. So these guys are goners, might as well even make them a bit bigger while we're at it. Oh, there we go. Two fancy microphones of real Panasonic caps. And I guess that's that for setting up a new case. All we need to do now is move the old server in there. Oh, almost brings a tear to the eye. I've had this case for so long. Ah, uh, the old server. Was it so long since we were here last actually installing all the new hardware in it? I mean, this stuff has barely been online for a month. It's already moving. But yeah, you can see the issue with the, the hard drive noise in this case. So we've got the traditional bolt straight to the chassis, the hard drive main in this. It's pretty much impossible to install uh, anywhere near as much damping material as you should. Uh, the patches I've got on the side are actually enough to dampen those, uh, which is that we simply have too much uh, resonance going on just around here, basically. So it's, it's a difficult issue to solve, sadly. And the easiest way is to just move into a more modern case. 
And uh, of course we get the actual hot swap ability of a new case as well, since uh, this one looks like that on the front. And yeah, you're not pulling drafts live into that thing, as long as you stick them into the cheap eBay hard drive bay, which uh, I frankly don't trust for five minutes with any kind of critical data. So let's just tear this thing to bits. And there we go, we're pretty much ready to put everything back together in the new case. Uh, so I've uh, put all the hard drives and caddies. The uh, uh, SSD is going to go where the floppy drive used to go. Uh, that gives us the added advantage of actually having this kind of hot swappable without using a hot swap bay because you can just pull this out the front by removing the plastic case and uh, it pulls out with a SATA cable attached. Uh, I have uh, both modified the power supply and then uh, regretted doing that in a way uh, because I had to add uh, three molars. Molex connectors to actually power the uh, SATA hot swap backplane, uh, but in doing so, I actually forgot that I needed uh, yet another Molex connector to power the single case fan, which is going to be on 5 volts constantly. Uh, so, in order to remedy that, we're doing one of the dumbest things ever and just using a SATA to Molex adapter to power a fan. It's ugly, but it works, it's just 20 milliamps. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the Sadly, the motherboard is not going to mend very well because uh, for some reason they didn't put proper M80X screw holes uh, in their E80X case. I wonder why. Uh, so we've only got uh, four screws to mend the motherboard in, uh, but they're all arranged with CPU basically, so it's going to be good enough. And there we have it. If that's not a sight for sore eyes. I want to try turning it on. Let's go. I'll see if it doesn't fry this motherboard as well. Doesn't sound like it. Alright, so there were a couple of issues with that test. Uh, for starters, I had forgotten to wire that fan up to 5 volts, so it would spin like crazy. I've remedied that, and it's running just fine now, absolutely inaudibly. Uh, but beyond that, I really wasn't happy with the amount of uh, hard drive noise we were getting. Uh, a downside of this uh, hot swap chassis as compared to the uh, interior mounting model is that the drives are now much closer to the front face of a computer, so a more of the high pitched, uh, kind of white, noisy and, uh, sound is going to come through a lot easier. So, I had to install some car soundproofing stuff in here just straight in front of the drives to, to remedy that issue, and uh, it does some good, but sadly. Uh, this case does have more kind of white noisy mechanical uh, hard drive sound to it than the old one. Uh, it, it's marginal though, but the sound is still there. And I took, uh, just installed a bunch of that stuff on the side here as well. The uh, black stuff does an excellent job at damping uh, vi vibrations and resonances, but when it comes to actually a dissipating sound, it uh, really doesn't do much, it just bounces it around a bunch. So, w when you have like this big cage of drives, which is entirely encapsulated in the black stuff, you essentially just get a big uh, horn going, where the sound is bouncing around until it finds an exit, which is the front of a computer, and all the decibels are rated in there. So you need to have something there to uh, just catch that and uh, dissipate it in an orderly fashion, unless you want to hear it. But yeah, I think it's good enough. The hot swap capability is uh, worth it to me. So let's just get the side panel on and give you a bit of a demo. Alright, so this is the sound level of the server uh, with the side panel off and the front open. Oh, that's it with everything closed. Really, the front panel does make such a big difference. And with that, I don't think there's much left to do about this other than put this thing back on the floor and let it resume its production environment. So, thank you for watching. Cheerio.